Hi guys, this is the Java series part 43. In the last session, we have discussed about constructor chaining. What is constructor chaining? Constructor chaining is the process of calling one constructor from another constructor with respect to the current object. Isn't it? And uh, constructor chaining can be done using this keyword and super keyword. Okay. We have only discussed about how the constructor chaining can be done using this keyword. And constructor chaining can be done in any order. It may be a descending order of the arguments or it may be the ascending order of the arguments. Okay. In the previous session, we have discussed about how the constructor chaining can be done in the descending order. Okay. In this session, we will discuss about how the constructor chaining can be done using this keyword in ascending order. Okay. So, here I have created the package. This is my package name and this is my class name. Inside of this class only I have the main method. So, I have given the file name as this class name only and inside of this class I have created the constructors. The constructor name should be same as the class name. Already we have discussed. Okay. And there is no return type. Okay. And what type of a constructor is this? This is the default constructor. Because it does not contain any arguments here. Okay. And what is the role of this constructor? It's used to print the, the default constructor on my console. Okay. And here I have created one more constructor but it contains the single parameter that is single argument its data type is integer what is the role of this single argument constructor is it is used to invoke the current class default constructor because this keyword is used to refer the current class object already we discussed about the, this keyword so what is it this is used to refer the current class default constructor because inside the round brackets there is no arguments. This statement is used to invoke the default constructor of this class. Okay. And here we have one more statement. The value of x will be printed on my console. And here I have one more constructor. Inside this constructor I have used two arguments. And what is the role of this double parameterized constructor here this of 5 that is single parameterized constructor so here this keyword is used to invoke the single parameterized constructor of this class okay so here i have the value 5 that value 5 will be stored inside the x variable and uh, all the statements inside the single parameterized constructor will be invoked and here we have one more statement uh, so this statement is used to, to print this on my console multiplication of x and y value will be printed on my console okay and here i have the main method so execution starts only from the main method so after encounter this line what will happen the control jumps from the 30 second line to the double parameterized constructor. Where is it? Here we have. So the control comes here and the 8 will be stored inside the x variable and 10 will be stored inside the y variable. Okay. And all the statements inside this double parameterized constructor will be executed. So let me execute this one. Then only you can understand easily. So this is our output. So execution starts only from the main method. Here, after encounter this line, the control carries the 8 and 10 and jumps from the 30 second line to the 20 second line because here we have uh, the constructor with two argument values. So, the control jumps from the 30 second to 20 second line. Here, 8 is stored inside the x and 10 is stored inside y and inside this double parameterized constructor we have the single parameterized constructor because uh, this keyword refers the current class object and here we have the single 
parameter value so the control again jumps from the 25th line to the single parameterized constructor that is here the control comes and the value 5 that is here we have the 5 so that value is stored inside the x variable and inside this single parameterized constructor we have the default constructor this refers the current class object here there is no parameter values and the control jumps from the 17th line to constructor here we have the statement default constructor that's why we got this output here after then the control again jumps from the 11th line to the 18th line okay so here we have this statement so the x value is printed here that's why we got this statement here and then the control again jumps back to 26th line. Here we have the statement multiplication of x and y. That's why we got this value that is 8 into 10. 80 is the result. Okay. After then the control jumps from the 26 to 33. The program is finished. Okay. So what order is this? This is the ascending order. Here this is the default constructor means no parameters. Here single parameter and then two parameter. So this order is the ascending order. But uh, in the previous session we have seen this example. Now I execute this here two parameters and single parameter and then no parameter. So this is the descending order. So constructor chaining can be done in any order. Okay, any order means what? Ascending or descending order. So, in this example, we got the descending order output. Here, in this example, we got the ascending ordered output. I hope you all understood about what is the constructor chaining. And constructor chaining can be done in any order. That is either descending or ascending order. Okay. We have completed this session. If you have any doubts, drop the message in the comment section. If this video is useful to you, like and share. For more videos, subscribe my channel. Hit the bell icon, then only you will get the notification for my new updates. Have a nice day. Thank you.